Okay, here we go. So welcome uh, everybody. Uh, another episode where we uh, meet the expert. And uh, uh, today we are with uh, Julia Potet. Uh, uh, hi, Julia. Welcome. Hi, Joseph. Thank you. So thank you very much for uh, joining us in this initiative where we try to uh, share some uh, thoughts and uh, give people some uh, food for thoughts about uh, the whole situation that uh, it's happening, of course, <laughs> we are well, 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 very well aware. Um, but uh, please explain to our viewers um, uh, who you are and uh, what is your area of expertise. Okay, my name is Julia Poti, as we know. Um, I'm a professor at Parsons School of Design. I've been there for over 20 years. But before doing that, I also worked in industry in New York City in the fashion industry. Um, I ran a company, company showroom and design room during my last period there for Intimate Apparel. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I did design the line, but I also oversaw the merchandising and selling of the line. Okay, um, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I was invited to come teach classes at Parsons. Mm -hmm. I did, and uh, from there on, I was invited to become a uh, full-time faculty, and that's where I am now. I'm. I also, in my spare time, which is very little, <laughs> I, I design uh, a handbag and accessory line for mm -hmm. um, the Julia Petit label. That's great. And I, I, I've seen uh, those bags and they really look uh, amazing. You work a lot around the, the, the materials, the raw materials and the design, right? The patterns on, uh, on your bags. Absolutely. So um, I'm really kind of, I'm focusing on, uh, you could say they're upscale at this, mm -hmm. point, uh, but my focus is sustainability, is organic, organic leathers. It's... Um, you know, working around things that are are really sustainable and organic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and that is very important as we will be able to uh, unfold uh, over our uh, conversation. So the format of this um, uh, segment is uh, pretty straightforward. So I'm going to ask you a few uh, questions, and uh, I'm going to ask to share your wisdom uh, with us. Uh, so considering what, uh, of course, the, the, the situation that has affected um, uh, all, uh, um, uh, all of us, uh, but we are trying to look uh, a little bit past what it's going to be uh, this uh, crisis. So my first question is, um, according to you in, and in your area of expertise, what is going to be the most crucial shift in the uh, business or professional field of your expertise, the uh, most crucial shift? Well, I think mostly uh, what's going to happen is we're going to have to rely, move more of the manufacturing of products into the countries that they're designed in. Hmm. I think um, maybe we're going to some of the manufacturing that we in the U.S. shipped offshore mm -hmm. will be back to us. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that young designers coming out of school are going to have to focus on what is really needed mm -hmm. in the business at this point. And uh, I'm not going to say, you know, just uh, recycling, but using what's available mm. until we get through this, uh, you know, this crisis. But I don't see it. I don't see the way that we've been manufacturing and overloading the system with design. Mm that maybe are not useful it's going mm -hmm. to you know I think that's going to I think that's going to stop mm -hmm. well because in terms of uh, apparel considering that the uh, of course the social environment is going to be different for a, a, a little while at least we are all mm -hmm. seeing that the reasonable predictions and that's also what I see people feel people feel that uh, it's gonna it, it, it's gonna take some time and also that things for a for a while are not going to be the same. So even in terms of formal uh, uh, um, uh, dresses, formal uh, um, uh, uh, clothes, um, and it's going to be different because uh, uh, not only the social environment has changed, but also uh, the workplace 
and uh, and in general the, the the needs of the business people in terms of uh, travel and other stuff it's going to be more in terms of being comfortable being uh, being sustainable being responsible uh, I've seen a very interesting data I want to share with you that um, uh, considering the uh, categories of online shopping, uh, as a matter of fact, formal wear <laughs> for men and women, of course, is down when people are looking instead for more comfortable okay. uh, clothes. Absolutely. I mean, which goes back to my days of working in lingerie, um, intimate apparel and loungewear. Uh -huh. Last where where you know people wanted to be comfortable in their homes. Um, so I think that yes, I don't think everybody's going to walk around in their pajamas, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know, while they're Hopefully working, not. <laughs> working at home. I do think that a lot of the garment industry is going to be focused, as you said, on comfort, mm -hmm. on on being comfort comfortable in your in your home, which is now going to be your workplace. Yeah. Yeah, that is absolutely uh, on point. And uh, uh, for the uh, creatives and the designers out there, uh, probably uh, this uh, new uh, uh, path that you are uh, hinting in terms of uh, it's going to take a while before some manufacturing is going to come back. So mm -hmm. we, we need to deal with the source materials. But that, that also can be uh, seen as a push for creative people. Uh, when you have limited resources, you actually have to push in your, on your ingenuity and your creativity. So if you are a creative, uh, that's going to be challenging on one hand. But on the other hand, the, the, real, the, really, the real creative people are going to have a competitive advantage. Am I right? I think so. I mean, this is actually, this is um, one of the uh, projects that I've always had in my design classes. And it was, you know, an upcycling, recycling, uh, repurposing uh, project. Mm -hmm. And I think that more people are going to be looking at that, mm -hmm. you know, purposing things because there has been so much waste in the, in the yeah. industry. Um, and why waste if, you know, using mm -hmm. less, but yes. more. Yeah. Yeah, because if we uh, have to use basically the available uh, stock, uh, reconstructing, uh, repurposing uh, actually goes more on the brand of the creative people. So if you are a designer and even if you use available uh, material, but then you give your uh, personal flavor, your personal um, um, uh, footprint to that work it becomes unique and it becomes also more exclusive. Absolutely. It becomes basically one of a kind. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it's, a, it's an interesting way where we can reimagine what we consider upscale, what we consider luxurious, or what we consider exclusive. This is true. This is true. Because, uh, as I said, you know, when we use, when we reuse what we have, I mean, there is so much dead stock. Mm-hmm. Sitting yeah, because there was an issue in terms of uh, a market that was overloaded and 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 oversaturated. Not only that, I mean, it's it's oversaturated. But if you look at the market, it's oversaturated with the same thing. Mm. And how much of you know one product, one particular style, one particular product do you need? And yeah. you know, it's maybe you know. Uh, the population really wants to become a little more unique and they can see that they can be after this pandemic after, I mean, I've been watching people being, being very creative with their face masks, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. It's, it's another way of presenting yourself, not only just uh, our students, mm -hmm. which we know they will, but the everyday people are becoming somewhat designers too. Yeah, absolutely. And this leads to uh, what uh, is the second question. Uh, so uh, uh, according to you, what are the uh, valuable opportunities or food for thoughts that you see in your area of expertise uh, that can help people uh, surpass or uh, recover from this emergency? We, we partially answered, but what you think can be uh, uh, since your uh, expertise is is uh, focus a lot on uh, on uh, uh, garments and and design, uh, in particular, 
that that kind of uh, trampoline, that kind of uh, 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 trigger that could help designer designers and creative people to overcome uh, this difficult time. Well, I, you know, I think um, most of it depends on the need. People have to look at what is really needed during during this time period. Um, what kind of clothes you really need in the summer, what kind of clothes you really need in the winter. And it's going to be where I think designs and uh, collections are going to be in season. Mm. They're not, they're not going to be able to buy uh, swimsuits in uh, January, you know, yeah. or um, a winter coat in June because, because of limitations mm -hmm. and was of need and I think more design is going to be focused on need mm. need um yeah that that is an excellent yeah it's a, because it's a huge driver as a matter of fact I've I've read that some uh, major uh firms some major labels actually are thinking that maybe the the seasonal system uh, maybe it's a little bit updated and this thing of having uh spring summer uh fall winter, uh, maybe the necessity now that needs to be uh, overcome in terms of, as you say, following the needs. Uh, actually, maybe it's gonna it's gonna be may, maybe a permanent change that uh, yeah. designers are gonna present collection as the needs come out instead of seasons. Yes. Well, you know, people try to do that. Had started to try to do this mm -hmm. to sell from the runway. Uh, but I think at this point it's going to be poor, more of a necessity mm -hmm. than just uh, an idea. Mm -hmm. I think at this point, um, we will be looking, and also it's going to be an economical thing. Mm -hmm. You know, how many people are going to have the money yeah. after this downturn um, to buy a winter coat in, say, June yeah. or um you know, or, or summer clothes in December. It's, I think a lot of it's going to focus on economics and need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, probably um, uh, trying to uh, find the source material uh, nearby or local sources, of course, it's a great way to cut, to cut your costs. Uh, and in repurposing, again, the, the margin the pro your profit as a creative as a designer can be again in creating one of a kind or uh, giving your uh, special uh, flavor to your collection that not necessarily is related to I mean the uh, the uh, extravagance right or or the, uh, the, the basically the, the 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 rush in order to find something new it's it, because the need i mean uh let's be clear as men and women uh we we always looking for something new and fresh so that desire is always going to be there uh but how how can we uh, how the consumers can fulfill this because there's going to be a demand the real deal is for you as a creative and designer is to uh in in uh, intersect that that demand absolutely so i mean so this goes back to what are our new designers going to do yeah. They're going to design for the need, but they're going to use the available materials and they're going to produce something that is fantastic where they don't have to wait uh, mm. or source yeah, exactly. out of the country. They're going to source within their regions. Yeah. Because you were mentioning, we, we had many conversations. You, you, you mentioned that uh, the... Um, Sorry, uh, you mentioned that there was an expertise in an, in an industry, especially in the south of the United States. Uh, so there, there was um, like a framework, uh, there was a system uh, that because of the trends of the last uh, 20, 25 years has uh, got depleted. But some of, the, of that uh, knowledge and know-how is still there. Absolutely, the knowledge is still there. And yes, uh, a lot of that industry went offshore mm -hmm. because of price. But yeah, at this yeah. point, the need is to have it here. And yes. the need is to have uh, jobs for the people who are here. Mm -hmm. And since the ex expertise is still here, yeah. not use the, you know, the knowledge yeah. 
the yeah. materials. I mean, even the manufacturing facilities, uh, there are still some of them there. Mm -hmm. They opened up again, reopened, and sure. used again. I mean, yeah. I'm sure that people <laughs> love the opportunity to do this. Yeah, absolutely. And this leads to the, the following uh, topic is, uh, and uh, what mistakes shall we not repeat or issues should we not overlook anymore? We, we uh, mentioned something, but uh, I guess you can articulate a little bit better on that. Well, I think one of the first things is overproduction. Mm. Overproduction of materials, I mean, of, of merchandise, you yeah. know, that uh, it just goes to waste. I mean, how many of the landfills are... So, you know, and I think that um, we're going to go more towards slow fashion than mm -hmm. fashion. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's an, a, a need for that. Yeah, especially when it comes, for example, for I'm thinking for kids wear, you know, uh, the necessity for kids wear, uh, it's going to be always high. And okay. uh, and that is and that is always an important market. Um, and, um, and, uh, I think that in, you know, since we, we're going to have the time to, uh, reflect and think, um, if we just, you know, slow down a little bit and we were, we try to look at our routine before, uh, we have to admit to ourselves that, um, we, um, we know that this, uh, fast fashion, uh, this, uh, almost, um, a feeling of constant be uh, rushed in order to buy something new. Um, it was more this kind of routine that we were doing brainless, really. But the the, the actual um, pleasure of uh, finding uh, something that you like, uh, something that you keep, something that you take care of. It, it's something that we were used only only 15 years ago. It wasn't you know that long ago. So, um, and, and again, we also talk a, a lot about, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, ethical workplace. Uh, we do know that some of the countries where uh, the production and the manufacturing is, is unfortunately based on the exploitation of people. So we looked the other way for, for many years, and, and maybe this is the time for a change. I think so. I think um, I mean I keep reading these articles about um, factories where where let's say the workers are you know they're underpaid they're totally used just used up and um, and some of them are actually like locked in these factories it's it's just like they can't even leave it's yeah. they're like slave labor um, yeah. I think we're all going to have to start looking at that more. More. Yes, we look at it. We've been looking at it all along, but there are a couple things. <laughs> it's the price, and that's yes. the thing. Yeah. Um, and with the price being so low, a lot of the ethical uh, things that are going on in these factories offshore have been dismissed or look overlooked. Yeah. I think that I think that the industry needs to start to look at what's going on yeah. there with a, with a, a special eye. Because uh, if, uh, you know, and nowadays uh, some some important uh, social uh, issues and social uh, topics now are uh, prominent, are, are on stage. There is a sensitivity towards the environment, uh, towards uh, the rights of uh, minorities and, uh, and uh, other communities. So this sensitivity is already uh, um, uh, there uh, under the spotlight. And uh, to bring that sensitivity also in the fashion and uh, uh, in the fashion industry is, is, is consistent to, you know, uh, the direction where uh, society was already going. And, and so uh, being responsible towards the planet, the environment, looking for products uh, where the, the resources and the sources are sustainable, it's something that now with our uh, choice, uh, since we always choose with our wallet too, it's it's a way where we, uh, the, the consumer can actually the consumers can be proactive in in a in a positive uh, in a positive change for a positive change. I think so. I I think so very much. I mean, we really have to look at the human rights and how how other people are treated when we are producing all of these products. 
Mm -hmm. And because and you realized a collection that is actually sustainable. So you are one of those also entrepreneurs that are the living proof that it is possible. It is possible. It's very possible. It's not cheap. And I will say that, but it is possible. And, you know, there, sustainable has been battered around a lot. You know, what's sustainable to one person is not sustainable to the other. I mean, it could focus on materials or it could focus on the product itself. If it is a product of quality, mm -hmm. it's going to last for a long time. That's a very sustainable product. Yeah. Um, and also, it's a, it's, a, it's a great way for uh, to support uh, communities in, in a different way. Because if we actually focus on buying a good bag that we really like, that is uh, made by it's, an artist in who actually puts their heart and soul into making this thing. And yes, it costs a lot of money, but if you love that bag, yeah. you're going to keep that bag for a very long time. Exactly. And yeah. if uh, you don't have the distractions of, yeah. uh, you know, uh, <laughs> like a like a crazy fast en uh, environment where everybody pushes for what is the new color, uh, what is the new cut, what is the new model, uh, we don't have that kind of pressure anymore. But it's more okay. Uh, what what uh, what designers are you supporting uh, with your purchase? And I think that's the other thing is that we really need to start supporting our local and uh, our local, not only our local designers, but our new designers, the designers who are coming into the market, who are trying to make um, uh, a new product, a new sustainable, uh, wonderful product. We need to, the community needs to support that designer, mm -hmm. those new people. And this maybe can be uh, some of those factors uh, that um, um, uh, I wanted to refer with my next question, which is, uh, uh, what conditions do you think the American economy can restart uh, on a better ground or become healthier or more robust than, uh, than before? Well, it's, I, uh, well, let's see, <laughs> more robust. When you say robust, you always think about more <laughs> money and all of that <laughs> um but i don't i don't know that those are going to be the the uh factors that are going to push us mm -hmm. forward. i think that <clears throat> most of the factors that are going to push us forward is basically looking at community looking at giving back looking at producing a a, a wonderful product a quality mm -hmm. product um <clears throat> and uh Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not so focused on the bottom line. I see. I hope so. Yeah. For this kind of stuff, we would hope that uh, the bottom line is not the is not the thing that that pushes you forward. And it's yeah. more uh, quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, but I think as again, the fashion industry is 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 part of the general uh, uh, manufacturing uh, system, and uh, the choices of uh, consumers are necessarily influenced by the general context. And a lot of people are actually rediscovering the value of uh, proximity of uh, human contact, of the support of local communities. So uh, I think that it's going to be an important uh, uh, driver for the future. And, uh, and uh, again, I think to, uh, get, uh, to uh, get this kind of message out there can really, uh, uh, on one hand, uh, other people might feel less alone because, you know, there might be people who are thinking this, but they might think, well, maybe I, I am the only one thinking this. Uh, on the other hand, uh, people who might think that, uh, you know, um, maybe this is not the, you know, the right way to go. But the truth is that individually, it, it, an individual uh, uh, change that piles up with the individual change of other people uh, actually uh, uh, change trends. And, yeah. uh, and, 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 and it becomes a force <laughs> and becomes a force. Yep. yep. So um, uh, with this, we can um, uh, go next. Uh, what is our uh, next and last uh, questions? Uh, more on a, let's say, on, a, on an international uh, level. Uh, what fundamental long term 
changes you expect to see in international trade and economy. Um, because this is a temporary situation, very likely 12, 18 months, we're probably going to be in a situation, may, maybe not the uh, uh, like economic uh, indicators, but in terms of lifestyle. But for sure, it's it's likely to to imagine that there are going to be some uh, long uh, like long term changes. What what do you expect to see uh, that it's going to have more like a permanent impact? Oh dear, this is a this is a difficult. I know, I know. I'm putting you on a hot spot. <laughs> Permanent? Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, at this point, it's it it's really diff. There's no travel, okay? Yeah. And yeah. we have all been so accustomed to hopping on that plane and going yeah, yeah. wherever we want to go. I think that um, travel is going to be not as prominent as it was before, mm. at least not in the forefront. Mm -hmm. um, and I think. That, and also, this is what always got has gotten to me. When I go to another country, I always look for products or that were produced by the people or the designers of that country to see what's new and unique and that really represents that, you know, yeah. those that community. Um, I think that we're going to see when when we travel now it's going to be a more unique experience than it has been because i'm i've traveled a lot and i've shopped a lot because that's what i do that's you know that's <laughs> that's my business um and i have gone and i've gotten off a plane in a different country gone into a store and seen exactly the same thing that I saw on Fifth Avenue. Mm. And uh, that's so true. Yeah. And, you know, I could be in Paris. I could be in China. I could be in Japan. I could be, in, you know, almost any place. And I can find that same jacket. Yeah. And I don't want to find it there. Yeah. I want to see that we are unique people in every country, every place we go, we can find the uniqueness of that community. So I think maybe that's going to start to happen again. I do remember it kind of being that way, and now it's not. Yeah. I think this is very important. Yeah, for sure, uh, since the, we see the global impact of this crisis, uh, it's, it's easy to imagine that uh, in terms of mobility, everything is going to change because before the whole world becomes a safe place, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to take a while. And uh, uh, the, the, the time we will uh, get to that point, habits will, will, will have changed. And, uh, and I think, uh, as again, uh, as a shopper, as somebody who uh, wants to discover the, the, what is special and peculiar about a culture, about a place, about a trend of a place, it, 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 it is important to have that uh, again. Uh, so I would say that, uh, especially for the, the designers and creatives, you, you gave some really um, uh, important points. Uh, the first is that, yeah, there are going to be challenges, but as a creative, uh, you are asked to embrace uh, that challenge. Exactly. And at the same time, there's going to be needs. Uh, the needs are going to be there. So you have to really work in order to intersect uh, these uh, and tackle uh, those needs in order to match uh, the demand. And considering that travel is going to be limited, how do you promote your brand uh, um, uh, um, more locally and have regional, basically regional um, uh, sources that you can um, uh, reach in order to uh, cut your, your costs? So also, I think that when, you know, we start to design again, uh, we might have to look outside of the box for for materials. Maybe it doesn't yeah. come from the garment industry. Maybe yeah. it comes from another industry. Maybe, yeah. we're you know, incorporating. Maybe we're working more as a unit, you know, everyone mm -hmm. working together. Um, yeah. As yeah. I said, community, I think community is going to be a, a big thing. Yeah. And we kind of see that now with um, with the designers making the masks for all of the masks and the hospital gowns and the materials that they're using. Yeah. Uh, 
so so I think a lot of that's going to sit in the minds of designers. Oh, look, I don't have to go here to buy my material. Maybe I can go to this industry and get something that works really well for me uh, and produce something that's new and unique. And but still working within the community, within uh, within our region. Yeah. Uh, Julia, these are uh, great points. Uh, I can't thank you enough uh, for uh, sharing your uh, time with us. Uh, this, was, this was a great conversation. Hopefully, we can have uh, many more. Um, and uh, for our viewers, they will uh, they will be able to find uh, your uh, contacts in the description of this video. And hopefully, uh, you guys like this video. So remember to uh, like, share, and uh, uh, subscribe. And Julia, uh, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, be safe, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>